Alright, uh, family, I uh, appreciate the, the, the wonderful introduction. Again, uh, let's uh, get into some uh, additional questions. What has been the challenges um, during the, the first 15 years of Garvey Town, 2004 to 2019? Learning the culture, uh, learning the rules and Yeah, uh, learning to put aside all the years of brain dirty. Uh, I'm not going to use the word brainwashing because I need a brainwashing. <laughs> um, you know, trying to put aside the years of brain dirty. Yeah, to be able to accept uh, the African way. The 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 challenge is for us has been many in particular trying to convince other Africans who say they're Pan-Africans who say spend their time fighting the states that we live in wherever we are in the world because one of the things that the group that we come from never do we never refer to ourselves as I you know it's always we and us and so we are quite Africated, and what you will hear me use this terminology um, through the interview. I don't use the word educated because we got a lot of Africans with PhDs and all kind of science, and then I work for the enemy. Yeah, and so to me, they're not Africated Africans. They're educated people that work for whichever state that they live in, or whichever colonial master was the person that helped to encapsulate their, their, their ancestors. So we're Africated Africans who know that an Africated African's duty is to do for self and to do for their community. You don't do things that you do just to benefit yourself. Because what that breeds, it breeds envy, jealousy yes, yes. and them something them. Yeah, it's yeah. me I deal with. And so we're not about that. So one of the main challenges was trying it's been trying over the last 15 years to convince Africans in the Britain, because we live in Britain, uh, to join the project and be a part of it. And a lot of them come, but they can't get over the obstacle that the land don't belong to them. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's the, the, the land issue is one of the main issues. So we've had, because we've, we stay there and we do the seminars and things like that with the people, then we sign them up. And then they would say, well, look, we want to go Garvey Town. So they will come to um, and visit Garadina, and then they will see the land, they don't see nothing. And then <laughs> what you find, they go somewhere else, and they've got, they say, they've got to buy a piece of land, and then they start bill, and then they have problems, and then the Quaker, can Garadina help me? Yeah, this that is, a lot. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is true. And I've had to get angry with him, and say, if them, why you fail them, you charge them, Bredrick. Yeah? You charge them money because them don't want to be part of a collective. So charge, feed, is a service you have to give them. You're dead there, eh? you are live there. Yeah? So you have to earn money too. So if they want, want you to do it, charge them reggae. Yeah? You, you understand what I said? So that has been one of the biggest challenges. Now let me say this. It's not that we haven't had people with money that could have built Garvey Town 10 years ago. Come. And this is the truth. We've had two set of millionaires wanting to invest in Garvita. Mm -hmm. But that investment <coughs> would have affected the prime objective. Mm -hmm. And the prime objective can it be overruled by anybody. Okay. Not even the founding members. Mm -hmm. And to accept money from those people. We'd have got Garvey Town built, would have been all right, but it would have created a problem in the future. So the biggest challenge is to get Africans to think like traditional Africans. That I am because we are, and we are because because we are therefore I am, and and that's been one of the biggest challenge. And so as I said, we just give thanks to those. That's come, but as we said earlier, not before time. Quite excellent time.
excellent and definitely uh, aware of um, our folks are and you know, one of the biggest issue is that uh, people come and they see beer land and you know we've had our challenges trying to get you know the energy of our community and so I say it's a perfect connection with our Africa for Africans tourism investment operation linking with Garvey Town so appreciate that you know both of you Can I just say leadership. something as well? Sure. Say something. Continue. Just one thing for all the Africans, because this is going to go worldwide, that live in European countries, that has pretty roads, excellent trains and undergrounds and subways and tall buildings and all these pretty things. Most of the European destinations that you live did not belong to those Europeans. Australia didn't belong to them. Canada never belonged to them. North and South America never belonged to them. Yeah? New Zealand never belonged to them. But their founding fathers and mothers, when they went there, it was a spear land them say. Not never did as I'm full of TP. Because the, the great civilizations that was there before the Mayans and the Omics had gone. But they had a vision of what they wanted for their future. So when you come to Garvitan, come with that vision of what you want for the future of your descendants. That's what I was saying. That's excellent. Uh, let's go into some uh, more questions. Uh, what is the projection of how Garvitan will work in the next five to ten years? And what's the plan to build the roads? Um, Garvey Town, over the next five to ten years, we plan to have 150 families here within the next five to ten years um, from the diaspora. Uh, the plan is for those families to develop a business center that will create work for all members. Yes? and generate income for ourselves and the local community. Um, the plan for the roads, as we develop, there are taxes that the businesses pay to Garvita. Um, and those taxes are used to develop the sites, to pay for in infrastructure. Uh, Garvey Town Company, it's all its surplus that is not needed for further um, development is used in the putting in of infrastructure for the community. So that's beautiful plan. Beautiful plan. Uh, it's kind of similar like how um, the government is supposed to do. You pay tax and they build the roads, but. Sometimes we question how that works, but that's why I like the, the energy that we have because we're responsible to doing everything ourselves. ourselves yes. And uh, this one is a little uh, trick we, um, now we have, when we, um, when we get our Garvey Town shared agreement, is that the only legal paperwork we get or is something submitted to the Lands Commission? Right. Um, uh, no, not to the Lands Commission. What happens is there will be a document, um, the lawyers, I will draw it up. The document has to be drawn up uh, depending on the citizenship that you're coming <coughs> with. Um, there are certain <coughs> countries where uh, we have to have special agreements because there are um, drawbacks in their citizenship laws. Yes, um, But each of us will get a document that will then be signed by the family um, that gives us the rights to be here um, legally. Um, these rights extend beyond the Lands Commission, beyond the European law that is now used. It is the traditional um, law, yes, um, and it supersedes <coughs> the European written law. Right, the Constitution is based on the concept of land is the property of those yet unborn. And um, this whole thing is based within that. It is a 
thing to link two parts of a family that was separated by history. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so in African culture, when you leave one community and you come to another, you go and you present yourself to uh, the king, the chief, whatever you want to call them. Yeah. The head person in that community. You pledge allegiance to the community. Um, you pay uh, gratuity to them. They give you land to live on, land to farm on. Um, when you make something, yes, you grow yams, you pick out <coughs> some of your yams and you take it, Nana, here you go, yes, you, you constantly think, if they have a need, they come to you, yes, Good. right, and you settle within that community, um, and your rights to be there is on that basis. Uh, case in point is the Ga in Accra. They came here a couple of hundred years ago, right? They were given the rights to be here by two groups of people, one in uh, the Abri Mountains and one at, uh, ah, oh, the name of the place has gone out of my head. It might come back. Um, now, when you get land from the Gah, uh, if you buy a piece of land in Accra, the Gah don't own the land, right? Um, they are settlers on it. So they have to go to the people whose land it is to sell the land. Yes, you would be. And they have to pay those people something. Um, there's a drawback in what they're doing because the descendants of the people who gave the Gah the land can say, You've breached the agreement, you sold the land. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> there's a drawback. So that's one of the reasons why we're very careful to let people know we're not selling any land. <laughs> you with me? Because we do not want to breach the agreement so that sometime in the future, you with me, our children or grandchildren or great grandchildren will be told, Oh no, you breached the agreement. Mm -hmm. We must be on the right side of that. We've been allowed to come and resettle. So let us come and reset. Mm -hmm. Yes. Whatever property we have on the land is ours. If you decide you don't want to live here no more, you can sell it to another brother and sister. But you're selling the bricks and mortar, not the land that it sits right. on. The land that it sits on is part of the community. Exactly. And if they find gold in the land, it's for the community. Yes. <laughs> it's not for any individual. That's good clarity on that. Yeah. And family, what we're doing is making sure we uh, all have clarity so we can move strong with this project. Uh, we've got a few more questions. Right. Uh, now, we talked about the land prices. Uh, can you explain the reason why we're going to have to increase the prices on the land maybe every six months or so? Um, right. it, the, the family wanted to make sure in our negotiations that um, if we started, um, whatever their portion of what they get from when we bring a new member into the community. Um, that it bore resemblance to the value of the land at the time when that person came. So they asked us to review the prices every six months. Excellent um, family. So family, right, while the price is nice, lock it in because 2020, January, we have a increase in price but also what I like what you did with the, with the increase in price you added the clearing of the land yes and so the other thing that we want to know is that uh, is, is the clearing of the land is something annually uh, people have to put, uh, submit submit the, their money in to get it clear uh, annually or is it just right um, we want everyone to start building as soon as possible you've got five years to complete your building not five years to start it Right, five years to complete it. Um, there will be some guys that will be working here, um, keeping the place livable so that we don't have snakes and stuff taking over the place. Yeah, but um, once we've cleared it, yes, you within that five year period, you need to be building. So, as the building work is going on, the site will be kept clear 
for you. Yeah. Um, so it's not a yearly thing. It's something you pay once. Okay. If you think, if you leave it for too long, if you leave it three years, the bushes are gonna grow so strong that they're not gonna be bushes no more. They're gonna be what called brush, low trees, and you'll have to use money and effort to move them. You might even, if you leave it like four years before you start, you'll have to use a bulldozer again. Yes, so they don't have to pay the, the maintenance <laughs> yes. fee to maintain it uh, once that happens. Yes. Uh -huh. So that, that's perfect. Yeah, but if they're doing the work, it won't ever grow beyond what is um, easily dealt with. So that's perfect. And now uh, on our way back, uh, we're going to be uh, submitting the, the uh, clearance fee for all of us. That way you can keep moving because uh, I'm explaining to people that uh, you've done a great job clearing the land so they can see it. Uh, so we have to submit the rest of our money so you can continue to work. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, a few more questions and I will open up for some Q&A from our other uh, members. Okay. Uh, one of the things I like the, the fact that you gave us clarity of uh, we can use our own builders. But uh, explain the clarity of using your own builders. That way people are not confused about it. Um, Garvey Town is about us, a community. Um, among Garvey Town will be there will be builders and masons and carpenters and plumbers and so on, electricians, all of it. Our brothers and sisters that's coming in, some of them will be builders and masons and architects and so on, yes? The idea is that we create work for ourselves. So we're not encouraging any builder who is not a member of Garvey Town, right? Because we will be leeching money <laughs> from our community to outside. It makes a lot of sense. Right? Um, the idea is that our members do the work and earn the thing. Um, the profits that would normally go to the company is then used back into the community because Garvey Town doesn't have shareholders that's going to take that money. 51% of everything that goes into Garvey Town will be used for the purposes of our community. So you build a nation. Yeah, so that's the reason why we allow you to use your own thing, but please don't bring into the community services that are already in the community. We got masons that joined up and become part of our community. We use the masons. If a brother comes and he's a plumber, he joins our community, he can get work from our community. Electrician, etc. Electrician, whatever. Okay. That is, a per that is a perfect uh, exclamation, so from there no one else should be uh, yeah. confused. Uh, we do have a good brother, uh, he does dome homes, his name is Brandon Rogers. Right. Uh, My goal is to connect with him so yes. he can come by I, and I, sit I, down. I, I would like to talk to because I need a person who knows about, I've had inquiries about dome houses. And I don't know enough about it to say that I am going to supervise people doing it. So I need somebody that knows about it, enough about it to be able to supervise when people come. Because whatever buildings are done here, I have to stick to the codes. Yeah, and with dome housing, I don't know about enough about it to say that I can keep it to the codes, the structural engineering of it to the codes. Perfect, and so what we also explain to him, if he wants to be a part of the action in the future, he has to be a member. Yes. Because, uh, perfect, so. That would uh, give him and other people clarity. I have a few more questions and we're almost there. Right, uh, uh, we have a few documents on our website that I've gathered from you and I basically just made them all digital on the website because uh, you it was explained that uh, you had some issues with the website and I wanted to make sure that we had all of the documentation available for people while you are working on the uh, website. So I wanted to find out from you, uh, is there any other document we, we need, like any bylaws or any breakdown that you have that we haven't received? Um, there are some bylaws for Garvey Town, um, some restrictions in the terms of in terms of building, um, because like we said, we don't want people building mansions so that they're loaded it, making their neighbor feel <laughs> small. <laughs> yeah. So we we set up a set of rules. What happened is um, we lost some of this. I'm in the process of recovering it. Um, but it is virus ridden. So before I can print it out, 
um, we need to sort it out but I will get it to you so you can put it up and we're rebuilding our website we will put it there also Perfect. but um, there, there are some rules about the size of the houses and so on yeah um, and also um, the issue about how we can build our houses we are governed by the planning laws in Ghana so if you're build when we're building bungalows we have to be five feet away from our boundary yes um, that's the law in this country so that you do not cause a boundary dispute with somebody else so even if a husband and a wife have uh, two separate plots they uh -huh. still can't cross each other's boundary no, it's, it's, it's explaining that this is a square this is square you have to move five feet yes in, in any five edge feet yes in. Mm -hmm either side mm -hmm. yes that mean it, that mean you won't molest your if you and your neighbor have a boundary yeah. it's separate. you, you can't your neighbor that you, you don't have the, the, the problem of water that comes off of your roof yes. doing damage to somebody oh, else's yeah. building mm -hmm. and causing it the, the reason that it was done is to try and create harmony in the community that's mm -hmm. why the government passed those laws mm -hmm. yeah um, and they work and I think you with me Garvey town needs to stick by them yeah excellent I, I love the breakdown of these things and i love the structure and the rules and everything and th that's uh, what's going to make us move in union and the last question i have for you uh, based on the list of questions that um the group asked me uh, most of us have technology business and things like that and uh we want to know about uh, the agreement or arrangement to get um a, a tower on the property so we can have better internet and phone communication or better general telecommunication right um we originally was planning to do our own small system and then uh, we looked at the cost and we had some discussions with one of the mobile phone providers and they said that if they if we got 200 families here they will come and they will put in a mask <coughs> with high lighted uh, plates on the side for it they will put in a mask that will give us 4g um, network coverage um, and that will we will even be able to run from that um, that fiber optics you with me so that we can um, have good coverage with that where the weather doesn't affect it so much so um, they they've set a thing for um, 200 families but because the neighborhood is developing apart from our site there are also other people moving in if we get to like 120, 130, I think we can go and get the other people to say, you know, sign and they will then do it because there's enough other people if we're 120, 130 oh, yes, to make 200. Mm -hmm. They want 200 families mm -hmm. that will be Excellent. serviced by it to make it viable for them. Excellent. Uh, yes, I was looking at maybe in the next three to five years we'll have all those people all together. Yes. Uh, so excellent, I appreciate the energy. What I'm going to do is break on this session and then we're going to open up a fresh session and then we're going to have a Q&A from our, our other members that are here. <coughs>